Entropy. What if I told you time travel isn't just science fiction? Hidden in the laws of physics, there's a rule so deep it controls why time flows forward. By the end of this video, monkey, you will understand why bananas rot and how reversing entropy could mean reversing time itself. Imagine three bananas, monkey. One is perfectly yellow, one has soft brown spots, the last one has fully collapsed into mush. Monkey asks, what happens to my bananas? It's not just your bananas, monkey, it's everything. Ice cubes melt, stars burn out, your tidy jungle hut eventually looks like a hurricane hit it. Even galaxies drift apart, heading toward inevitable darkness. All of it is ruled by one invisible principle, entropy. Entropy is one of the deepest laws of physics, a rule so universal that it explains why time flows forward, why energy spreads out, why order decays into chaos. Monkey trembles. This sounds dangerous. It's not just dangerous possibility, monkey. It's inevitable. Entropy isn't a villain. It's the natural change itself. Without it, bananas wouldn't ripen, stars wouldn't shine, and you wouldn't exist to complain about your mushy bananas. Monkey frowns, holding up a banana. So entropy is the reason the universe turns to this from a tiny banana seed? Exactly, monkey. But here's the twist. Entropy isn't really about decay. It's about probabilities. It measures how many ways the atoms, molecules, particles can arrange themselves without changing what you see on the surface. And it will make sense in a bit, monkey. Monkey gets excited. Explain with bananas. All right, monkey. Rewind back to where you had three bananas on your desk. Now from where you're sitting, they all look perfectly yellow, identical. That's what physicists call a macro state. The zoom out view of a system, what you can see from the outside. But here's the secret. Inside each banana are billions of molecules bouncing around in unimaginable ways. If you could shrink down and watch them up close, you'd see that even though the bananas look the same to you, the molecules could be arranged in countless different patterns. And do you see those microscopic patterns, monkey? That's microstate. Monkey understands. So macrostate equals I see three yellow bananas. Microstate equals every atom, molecule, and sugar crystal inside separately moving, exactly monkey. Entropy measures the number of probable microstates that fit the macrostate you see. The more microscopic arrangements there are, the higher the entropy. Imagine a pyramid shape made of bananas. Pyramid shape is our macrostate. You have six bananas perfectly stacked into a beautiful little pyramid. That's one very specific arrangement, which is our microstate. Now monkey, hit the desk. Just like our viewers, hit that like and subscribe button. Let's count the possibilities here. As the bananas fall back, there's exactly one way to get that perfect pyramid, but there are thousands of ways for the bananas to be scattered around the table. So statistically, it's really improbable for the bananas to fall back into the perfect pyramid shape. That's the essence of entropy. The universe tends towards states that are more possible because disordered states almost always outnumber ordered ones. Monkey thinks, so entropy means messy bananas and messy rooms. No monkey. Entropy isn't about being messy. Entropy doesn't care what you think order is. It only cares about the number of microstates behind the scene. Monkey gets excited. What does this have to do with time travel? We'll get there soon, monkey. Be patient. We already know heat spreads, ice melts, bananas rot. But why does the universe always move from order to disorder? Boltzmann realized something brilliant. The more microstates a situation has, the more likely it is to happen. So nature naturally picks the states with the highest number of possibilities. Think of it like this monkey. The number of states of perfect order is so low and number of ways in disorder are so much. Nature just leans towards the ways where there are more ways to exist. Monkey understands. Entropy isn't choosing chaos. It's just statistics in a physics hat. Exactly, monkey. It's not a preference. It's probability, and that's why entropy always increases, because there are more ways for energy, matter, and information to spread out, rather than stay trapped in a tiny handful ways of order. Monkey gets confused. But if entropy always increases, how is there order in the universe at all? Good question, monkey. Entropy doesn't mean total chaos. It just means that on average, the total entropy of the entire universe increases. Order can still appear locally, Look at the sun, monkey. Inside, there are highly ordered reactions. That seems like decreasing entropy. But here's the thing. The sun releases enormous amounts of energy into space. 
that energy spreads out, increasing overall entropy in the universe. So the sun forms local order at the cost of greater disorder elsewhere. Just like your fridge, inside bananas stay cold and fresh, so lower entropy. But your fridge dumps heat into your kitchen and uses electricity, which increases entropy outside more than it reduces it inside. Monkey is sad. Is this why monkey age? Aging isn't just some cruel trick of nature, monkey. It's entropy gently rearranging the microscopic structures inside you, bit by bit, second by second. And remember, there are more ways to be disordered. So you can slow it down locally with healthy life choices, fridges for bananas, air conditioning for smoothies, but you can't reverse it globally. The total entropy of the universe always goes up. Monkey looks at his aging reflection. So I can't go back, but I can still enjoy what I have right now. Exactly, monkey. Entropy takes away the past, but it also gives us the present. Monkey wishes everyone to leave a banana in the comments so he can enjoy them before entropy strikes again. Monkey asks, so entropy rising is why bananas rot and pyramids fall? But what about time? Entropy doesn't just explain why bananas rot. It explains why time moves forward. Think about it. Yesterday, your bananas were yellow. Today, they're spotted and soft. Tomorrow, they'll be brown mush. Entropy is the reason we experience a past and a future. Without it, there'd be no before or after. Time is just entropy increasing. If somehow all entropy in the universe decreased, time would feel like it was slowing down, maybe even running backward. Monkey understands. So entropy is literally time? Exactly, monkey. The two are inseparable. If entropy makes time flow forward, then if I reverse entropy, I can reverse time. Well, monkey, entropy doesn't forbid things from becoming ordered again. It's just absurdly improbable. Imagine trying to unrot a banana. Every single molecule would need to reverse its motion perfectly at the same time. For one banana, that's about 10 to the 25th power molecules. The odds of that happening randomly, like flipping 10 to the 25th power coins and getting all heads every single second since the beginning of the universe. Monkey is sad. So you're saying my banana isn't coming back? Exactly, monkey. At least not in this universe. But here's the twist. Scientists have seen entropy briefly decrease in tiny systems like a few trapped particles. Random fluctuations can occasionally make energy unspread for a split second. It's called a fluctuation theorem. Monkey gets excited. So my banana has hope? It's not impossible, monkey, but astronomically improbable. The universe plays a numbers game and Messi seems like it will always win. But don't lose hope, monkey. Some bold theories imagine mirror universes where time flows backward relative to ours, keeping the total entropy balanced. Others propose cyclic universes, big bangs followed by collapses where entropy resets. But so far, these are just beautiful equations. No telescope has seen a banana traveling backward through time yet. Monkey looks at his banana. So reversing entropy equals reversing time, but the odds are so small it's almost impossible. Unless, monkey gets serious, you control every atom in the universe at once.